Hi, my name's Hannah. I'm from Green Squirrel. We're a very small two-person social enterprise based in South Wales. And Carbon Coffee very kindly invited me to tell you a bit about our work. So I wanted to talk today about how we work at sort of different scales from nationwide to hyper-local and how we try and embed the principles of creativity and community in what we do. So I'm going to start with our biggest uh, nationwide project. So just last week, we launched a brand new online climate action community. This is UK wide and it's called The Something Club. And it's based on the idea that everyone can do something about the climate and nature emergency, but everyone's something is different and everyone needs different kinds of support. We think that everyone is uniquely qualified to be a climate leader in their own life. So as a member of The Something Club, uh, people can access a monthly program of workshops designed to build skills that support low carbon lifestyle change, uh, but also skills that support campaigning and running and starting your own projects and initiatives. And alongside the events program, we've created a platform so that members can share and learn and collaborate and find support uh, and share resources in a space that's friendly, welcoming, ad-free, and just a safe place to, to be part of the climate movement. More locally, we work across Cardiff and South Wales, and we work with a really wide range of different groups. So I've got some examples to share with you. Uh, this image here is something created by a participant uh, on our uh, Art for Change programme, which we run for the Prince's Trust, working with young people to explore their potential as climate advocates and uh, discover how they can use their creativity to raise awareness and uh, help change behaviour. We uh, like to work uh, a lot with growers and gardeners. So during lockdown, uh, lockdown one, we gave away over 8,000 free edible plants to um, residents in low income areas of Cardiff. So the people who were kind of discovering or rediscovering their garden during lockdown could get started. And we ran online grow alongs and had downloadable resources. So everybody hopefully had the information they needed to take the first steps as uh, veg growers. And it's one of my favorite projects. So in 2019, we ran a program called The Girl Who Wouldn't Give Up, where we worked with a storyteller to take an ancient Welsh, a Welsh myth, um, a monster myth, actually, um, and tweak it to make it a modern story of young people and communities speaking up and taking courageous action. And this went on for a few months. We did lots of outreach and storytelling sessions, circus sessions, craft sessions. Uh, it was amazing fun. Uh, and we created a short film of the story as well with lots of local young people in it, which was brilliant. And we love a little bit of street art and craftivism. So these are a few examples. Uh, so in 2019 and 2020, we invited residents to design a mythical guardian creature to protect a place they love. And then we got them painted big, got their illustrations turned into big murals. Uh, we also worked with residents to make this wildflower, a uh, pop-up wildflower meadow. So local people made over 700 pom-poms, which we attached to the most enormous green rug. Uh, as part of a campaign asking our local authority to mow less and mow later. And that's been great because groups are still borrowing that and using that for their campaigns. And finally, we quite like to do land art. It's a wonderful way of helping groups take ownership of their green space. And I like the way it always turns out different. This is also a project I've really enjoyed this year called Data, Art and Action. Again, we're working with the Prince's Trust, but this time with uh, secondary schools throughout Wales to learn about how climate data is collected and how it's used and to create their own piece of art using reclaimed textiles based upon Ed Hawkins warming stripes. Um, so creating an image representing temperature data for whales. And we love running events. So we've done everything from uh, pop-up food waste supper clubs is one of the top left, uh, took place inside a polytunnel, which was really fun. Uh, lots of skilled sustainable living workshops from carpentry and DIY to bike repair to food growing to chicken keeping, natural dyeing, and then lots of standalone events such as pedal pad cinemas and street parties. And we work with a really diverse range of groups. So this is um, image from a recent project we just finished up with the Innovate Trust, who work with adults with learning disabilities, and we ran a green skills program with them, which was great fun. And then on a sort of hyper local basis, we've been working since 2014 to reclaim a quite large piece of derelict land in Splot, which is one of the most deprived areas in Wales. Uh, and 
following year, many years really of conversations with the community and lots of different consultation and different activities and following lots of events on the site itself like litter picks and plant giveaways and play sessions and repair cafes we have worked with residents to co-produce a plan for a community resilience hub uh, that's going to include community allotment space um, a classroom and an outdoor classroom too lots of natural play wildlife habitats sustainable drainage climate friendly planting and lots of small business spaces and a permanent library of things where residents can borrow uh, resources really cheaply this has been a long long difficult challenging <laughs> roller coaster of a journey but uh, just last week we were able to finally hold a groundbreaking ceremony on site uh, with lots of residents coming along and taking part. And then this is happening right now. The site is finally being built and ho hopes to open next summer, early summer next year. So thank you for letting me share a little snapshot of our work. I wanted to show you this big range of examples of what we do because something that we really base a lot of our work on is the idea that there's no one right way to do climate action. There's, there's no correct way to be uh, an environmentalist or to make your community more resilient. And we believe that when um, ideas and energy comes from the community and is led by the community, that's when the projects that we work on will be their most meaningful, their most engaging and their most long lasting. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share our work with you today. Bye.